I think that that I did have this image of, you know, the ideal. And I mean, there's no way that I would have been ready for someone like Gail in my 20s, probably even in my 30s. Because I'm a lot to, to deal with. Well, but I'm a lot to deal with. I mean, I'm a yeah. lot to deal with in the sense that I think I was much more demanding. Um, I think I was much more, you know, of a place where the universe kind of revolved around me. And that's not a good place to be. I'm still a little like that. <laughs> as, as Gail, get away with it. As Gail well knows. Yeah, but that's right. And I, I don't get away with it. And that's good. That's mm -hmm. good that I don't get away with it. And it's... I think what, what finally happened for me was that I, I just got to a place where I recognized, where I understood that a relationship really had to be a two-way street. And I don't think I was there. I really don't think I was there in my 30s. And I know I'm probably not as much of a two-way street sometimes as Gail would like, but uh, but... But I try. Within my own limitations, I definitely try. We, we give each other room. We give each other a space. Um, you know, and we don't always have to do the same thing all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so if I don't want to go walking, I don't go walking. You know, and if Gail doesn't want to watch the myriad hours of television that I watch, then she doesn't. You know, I mean, I used to want to share every episode of everything with her. And now I just say, you pick like you pick like three things or four things. She says, turns into eight. <laughs> you know, I get it. I, I get it expanded. But, you know, we, we have our series that we watch and stuff that we do. But there's stuff that we don't do. And I'm comfortable with that now. And I and you're you seem to be comfortable with that. I mean, every once in a while you'll say, "Come on, honey, let's go for a walk together with the dog," and we'll do that. Yeah. And we do that. But you know, when she gets up three times a week with the weights and the thing, I don't do that. <laughs> but I think we're we're old enough now. We're, you know, we're mature enough where where we don't have kind of unreasonable expectations about what marriage is. I think that when you're more mature, when you get married, you figure out, you know what's important. You know, the kinds of arguments that you can have when you're younger that are just silly. They're, they're you know, when you stop and think, is it really, is arguing about this or how we feel about each other? Which is more important? Is it the stuff that's stacked up on the table that I don't want there or that you didn't do this? Is that more important than how we feel about each other or how I treat you? And I think you 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 begin to realize what's what's more important. And I, I think that's true. And I think the other thing is that, I mean, we could probably make a list of the things that we don't have in common. Mm. We could probably make a pretty big list of the things we don't have in common. And yet, I we have never had a discussion about core values, core beliefs, in which we haven't completely agreed with each other. Um, and I don't even know if we knew that going in at mm -hmm. the time, but we, but the, we've never, you know, I've seen other people argue about really basic big things. We just don't. We don't. We don't. We argue about little things, but we don't argue about major, you know, life decisions. We don't argue about about core beliefs, core values, mm -hmm. and um, and I always marvel at that. You know, because on the surface, two people can look like they're completely compatible because they go, you know, fishing and hiking and they, they do everything together. But to me, it's more important that, you know, because it would be very difficult for me to live with someone who fundamentally thinks about major things in a different way than I do. We have such core feelings that are, that are so strong uh, together. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's wonderful because... Uh, we don't. We can almost, you know, know what each other is thinking about about those things. Mm -hmm. It's a very narcissistic town, um, and it's very hard to not think that the world revolves around you.
You're Jimmy's agent? Yes, sir. The name is Harry Johnson. <laughs> now, how do you do, Mr. Johnson? You sit over there. I'll take over now. <laughs> Isn't he cute? <laughs> well, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> now, Mr. Benny, I understand you want to use my client on one of your television shows. That's right. That's right, I do. He's supposed to play me as a little boy. And uh, now, you being his agent, uh, what do you think I should pay him? I mean, what do you think would be a fair salary? $2,000. <laughs> $2,000? Think I'm cute? <laughs> Don't stand there bleeding. Say something. With me, I think it was less Hollywood than it was my upbringing because I started as a child actor. My father gave up any sense of his own career to help me when I was a baby. The world revolved around me. And it was very hard to let go of that because once you start to think that the world revolves around you, then that could take you down all kinds of bad places. With me, it didn't. I was, you know, I never got into drugs. Um, I, uh, you know, never had anything like that. That wasn't my issue. My issue was just being coddled, pampered, cared for, you know, and then expecting any woman that I met to do that. Um, until he ran into me. <laughs> <laughs> until I ran into you, but yeah. I'd already given that up, actually. Um, at, as, as my third marriage was kind of falling apart, I'd already gotten to a place of saying, okay, this, this isn't working and I can't. You know, I knew it wasn't going to work, unfortunately, with my third wife, but... I also knew that if anything, if anything was going to happen in the future, I had to give up um, that part of me. Um, and it's very hard to give up. It's, it's really tough. And I still haven't completely given it up, as Gail can attest. Um, but the awareness of it helps. And the awareness of, wait a minute, I'm being selfish now. I'm being self-centered now. Um, I think is, is very helpful. But the other piece of it, when you talk about Hollywood, is we don't associate with Hollywood much. You know, we live in Pasadena. Our friends are not in show business. Um, we've got uh, one possibly new friendship that, that, that may be show business related. But other than that, um, our friends aren't, aren't in the business. I've never really felt of Hollywood. My, my friends as kids. Uh, uh, weren't mostly in the business. Some were, few were, but not, not very many. So, uh, so Hollywood has always been something a little, a little distant. But having said that, you're right. I mean, you have that experience, you're working, um, you know, the world kind of caters to you, and that, that does exist, whether you're in Hollywood or in Pasadena or in the valley or wherever you are, it does go with the territory.